Have you ever wondered how 42 Campus works? How can students use any computer they want? Every time they log in to one of our computers, they will see their home, all their files, and even their personal wallpaper. Have you ever wondered what makes it possible? Or how we manage the computers that we have on campus? How are your projects evaluated? Or what the hell is this big tower with lights? But before we go into details, we need a bigger picture. So let's start with an overview of how our campus works and what we have in our server room. We are the tech team at 42 Berlin. My name is Pedro. I'm Rodrigo. And I'm Lola, and we are responsible for tech on campus. There are two main infrastructures in any 42 campus. There's an infrastructure that is shared by all the campuses owned by 42 Central. And this is going to have things like Intra. It has the database with all the users. Whenever you sign up to Apicin, your user is going to be created in 42 Central site where you can log into Intra. The second infrastructure for every campus is the local infrastructure. In our case, it's 42 Berlin. And here we have a server. Every campus is hosting locally many services. For example, they host your local PC accounts, your home folders, they are hosting your Git repositories for the projects. Mulinet exists locally on campus. These two infrastructures exist for every campus and they are going to be constantly communicating between each other. For example, Puritu Central is going to create your user and that is going to send us a notification to create your PC local account, your home folder. For example, whenever you register to a project, your Git repository is going to be created on our local site. And then we are going to give the repository address back to 42 Central so that you can see it in your Intra project page. This is a quick overview of how every campus is built. Let's go to the main server so that we can see all the hardware in action. This is the brain and the heart of 42 Berlin and the most expensive square meter on campus. This is our server and let's start from the top down to see what devices we have. Right here, these two first devices are the ones that provide us with internet connection. So these are provided by the internet service provider. I mean, this is internet. This would be like the router at your home, but a little bit more professional. After our internet connection, we want to block all unwanted connections and traffic. So we have our PFSense firewall right here. This is also part of your router at home, but we have different devices because we need more powerful machines. The firewall is going to allow us to block traffic from certain countries or unwanted connections and make our network more secure. After our firewall, we have our Cisco N9000K. It's probably one of the most expensive devices we have in this rack, and this is going to connect all the other switches that are connecting every device on campus with the internet. And it's going to route all the packages between devices and the internet. If we keep going down, now we have the two more powerful computers that we have on campus. And this is where all our services run. Uh, you may have heard of Mulinet. This is where Mulinet lives. These computers have 72 CPUs and around 512 gigabytes of RAM. So very, very powerful. Right now we have around 77 virtual machines running just for campus. We are not going to go into much detail of what they are running, but that could be a topic for another video in the future. For safety, we need to back up everything. We need backups in case we lose any virtual machine or any data. We have another less powerful server just dedicated to do backups of the other two servers and all the virtual machines. So we have two hosts, one backup, and then we need storage. All our students have five gigabytes for their own use for their sessions, and all of those files live in the two storage servers that we have. And then lastly, in the server, we have the UPS. So it's our unlimited power supply. This is essentially a big battery. In case we lose power, we can safely shut down everything in order so that there are no data losses or any other issue. This is all the things that we have in the front. We have something else in the back. 
So here in the back, hidden from any human contact, we have a very powerful desktop computer that is running a NVIDIA GTX graphic card. And we are using this computer at the moment to run some local LLMs and run some services that require some GPU power. We left these two panels to the end because this is what's connecting using fiber cables, fiber optic cables. It's connecting our main switch to all the other switches in the cluster. So let's go there now. This is a Cisco switch rack. On every floor we have a switch or several switches and every cluster has its own switch. Sometimes they are hidden, sometimes they are beautiful like this one. They are all connected with optic fiber cables like these two and they all go to the main switch downstairs. So between the floors we have only these lightweight and thin and super fast optic fiber cables and we don't have to pull 300 Ethernet cables downstairs in the wall like this huge amount of cables and we can only distribute the connections on the floor and in this cluster we have 99 computers so every cable is connected to every computer here you can see how the cables are going from the switch under the ceiling through the wall and to every computer on this floor. This is how we connect our cluster computers with the internet and the local network and the local services. Wow. If you want to configure these switches, you have to know the specific command language. It's not that difficult, but it gives you a lot of power over devices and over the network. You can set a configuration for every port, and this helps us to improve security on campus. For example, students are not allowed to plug in Ethernet cables into their own devices, laptops, and so on. Also, you can put different devices into different VLANs, and it also helps us to secure our networks and make everything safer. Ah, also, so we have a little device here. It's a Raspberry Pi computer and it helps us to do our little techie jobs. So we were not planning to talk about it, but because it's in the switch. We have a TV that is connected to the switch and here we have an opportunity to show information about our clusters. Let's move on to the next part of our video and it's the most important part for our students and it's about cluster computers. Let's go. This is the main device our students use to learn how to be a software engineer. It's a Linux computer that's running Ubuntu. Most of the applications that students need for their projects are installed system-wide. Students don't have pseudo rights to install or uninstall software. This means the tech team is responsible for maintaining the system and running updates, and also installing new applications whenever it's necessary. In the school, we have in total 301 computers. Imagine going to every single one of these computers to run a command. To avoid this, we use a tool called Ansible. It allows us to run commands remotely in every single computer. For example, we can use Ansible to turn off the computers at night and turn them back on again in the morning and to start the exams all at once. A special part of our setup is that students can use whatever computer they want. As a student, I always wondered how it worked. So now on the other side, on the tech team, I learned that we have a service called LDAP, which manages users' authentication. So whenever a student logs in and it's authenticated in our school computers, their home is mounted using the iSCSI c protocol. It's a protocol that lets a computer use storage over a network as if it were a local disk. It's cost-effective, flexible, and scalable. We can have centralized storage in the server rack, and from there we can allocate disk space for new students and clear storage for students who no longer study here. Fun fact. The most common tech-related problem on campus is that students cannot log in into their homes because the Ethernet cable is unplugged. Now you have seen all the hardware that we have at 42 Berlin and makes studying here possible. If we find that this video is of interest, then we may hijack the 42 Berlin YouTube channel again. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification and also tell your friends.
hours and hours of work. All you have seen, it's a lie. This is the main power unit that we have on campus. Here we have the power coming in with this button that we turn every day at 8 a.m. Otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, we turn on all the computers. And here in this tape that we need to manually turn is where student files are stored. And whenever we want to stop coding, we just push the stop button. Subscribe. This is the main device our students use. Of <laughs> I forgot to mention that we have four floors on our campus, so sometimes we have to do a workout while managing our computers.